Welcome, everybody, to the Sonoma Spiel. My name is Tim with the Sonoma Valley Visitors Bureau. It's a lovely day in Sonoma, Sonoma Valley. I know I say, hey, today I went to the farmer's market. Today I did not go to the farmer's market. Well, stop the presses. Today I went to Glen Ellen. I went to the beautiful little quaint village of Glen Ellen, and it's up there, up valley. And I slid through, and I stopped at this yellow house, and it's a bakery called Le Pascal's. And they have coffee and sandwiches and quiches. There was a yellow lab who kind of matched the building, sleeping at the back entrance of the patio. There are five tables of friends just kind of catching up and talking to each other. Backyard patio has wisteria. Wow. which is a flower, and an oak tree kind of overlooking the whole thing. And then uh, in the front of it is Pascal. And Pascal, I know you can tell by my French, there's two Pascals. There's Pascal male and Pascal female. One has an E at the end. I don't know which one's male or female. But hence, Les Pascals, the Pascals, because Pascal is married to Pascal. And she holds court up front and welcomes people. What is a Pascal? What a Pascal is a first name. I know, but what does it translate into? Do we know? Uh, Pasquale. That clears it up <laughs> I immensely. I don't know. So yeah, the Pascal was there. <laughs> you didn't I, expect these hard-hitting questions. We don't. Not right away. <laughs> hey, I'll, ask the, I'll ask the question, yeah. mystery guest. Hold Sorry. on here. Sorry. <laughs> but I have to mention I had a, a pain au chocolat, which is a, a way that fancy people say a, a chocolate croissant. And they have croque-monsieurs and macrons and eclairs and quiches. Then I went to Jack London Village, stopped by Passaggio, talked to Carol over there. They have live music, a great little tasting room yeah. at a historic mill. So I that, had a good day. That does sound amazing. It is amazing. But you know what's even more amazing? You is got that covered in quiches. I got covered <laughs> in quiches. More amazing than that is that today I have a very special guest. And I know I know every week I say, oh, this week I have a very special guest. But this time I mean it. This time I actually, <laughs> actually mean it. I have a very Aww. special guest, someone I've known for more than a little bit of time. Bethany Browning, how are you? I'm great, Tim. Thanks Good. so much for having me. Of course. Well, thanks for coming in here. Yeah. And uh, I've been very busy. You know, my full time job. Yes. As the thing in the woods that scares the villagers. <laughs> It takes people, a lot of time. Right. And so. people who don't know this or, or, or aren't watching on YouTube, you are in your ghillie suit, which I appreciate. That's true. <laughs> you just That's jump true. out of the woods. I do. <laughs> I do. You know, I, I find that there's always, yeah, well, I mean, you, there's never not a good day for a ghillie suit. There's never <laughs> a good day for a ghillie suit. So, well, thank you for coming down from the mountain. Of course. And not scaring the villagers. Of course. To yes. come talk to us. Bethany, I'm going to mm -hmm. introduce you as a writer or an author because we're going to talk about. But you're, you're more than that. You do a lot of things. I'm a multi-hyphenate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a like a quintuple threat. You're, you are a quintuple <laughs> threat. I like that. Well, why don't you tell me, um, since you are here about being a writer, Yeah. did you write something new? I did. Oh. I actually have two books out this summer. Two yeah. books? Two books. Okay. And a movie. What actually. are you, like Stephen I'm, King? Look at you. I know. I'm just Go cranking on. them out. Well, what's happened is, is that I've been writing for mm -hmm. a very long time. Right. And so now I just find myself sitting on top of all of these great stories, okay. and now I'm releasing them. Okay, the world, and they're coming so. out. Uh, your first, we'll, we'll we'll talk about your. Yeah. Let's talk about the book that's set here. Yes. And then and then we'll talk about the other book. Well, yeah, I okay. think you know the reason I'm here today, right. all things Sonoma Valley related. We right. really want to stay in that kind of. I like that know, kind of like a like premise it. of like like the ontology. Why am I here? Yeah. Today versus why am I here in the universe, which is an entirely different. That's podcast. a completely different book. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> the story that's, of that's not the book. I can tell you that right now. Um, but yeah, so I wrote a little book. Okay. Um, it's actually not a little book. It's a very long book. It's yeah. a little longer than it needs to be, maybe. Um, it's called Dead Spread. Okay. And it's set, it is very much 100% inspired. Right, like that. Um, <laughs> by Sonoma and okay. the town of Sonoma and okay. my time here, because as you know, I used to do scavenger hunts here, right? As well, called Mystery Missions. Mystery so Missions. So I've always been intrigued, okay, with the mysteries of Sonoma, and okay. I love Sonoma, and I think that um, it's a wonderful place, wonderful place to visit. It's a wonderful place to come for artistic inspiration. It's right. a wonderful place to write about. Okay. And so I took people that I know from here, like. Mm -hmm. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to. There are shades of I, Tim. I have the names of the characters. In the book, and George book. Weber, who yes. everybody knows plays um, all the these count. wonderful. The Count. And he was on this podcast about two or three he weeks ago. He was on ago. the podcast yep. a couple weeks ago, and he does his whole thing in his. Um, his uh, vest and top his, hat. Like, period costume. Yeah. So I made him into a character. He <clears throat> is okay. my main character's uncle, Uncle Grist Featherweight. 
is his name. <laughs> okay, hold, let's get into this. The name of this book's Dead Spring. Yeah, the name of the book is Dead Spring. And, and, and it's the first book, I'm assuming, because there's a one at the top. That's right. And then it says a house of cards mystery. That's right. So the book, um, the design is made to look like a tarot card. And okay. I'll tell you why. Yeah, because I think that plays into the plot, right? It does. So okay. the main character is a young woman named Carrie Detweiler. Carrie Detweiler, Stanford grad. She is a Stanford grad. Okay. But she's come home after school to live in her mortgage-free cottage that her Aunt Inez left to her after she passed away unexpectedly. Did you say a mortgage-free cottage in Sonoma? Yes. Well, this is fiction. <laughs> I, I know. I'm right. like, yeah, this is the one thing people can really take issue with. Come on, we'll fall suspension of disbelief. <laughs> I know. Like, it's a mystery, guys. Okay. Let's just, just bear with me so she's living right. there okay. um and she's reading tarot cards for a living and trying to pay off her stanford debt got it um so, so she's like whiling away her time and she's in debt she's in debt but she's okay. trying to work her way out of it she's good friends with everybody in town because right. she grew up here and then on one day dun, dun, dun. something goes very very <gasps> wrong okay and she she's good friends with the mayor the who mayor. gets his tarot cards read on, on i believe the mayor's name is preston bricks preston bricks and the name of the town he's the mayor of what's the name of the town prosperity prosperity is called, california is what we've called sonoma and it's a small town it is a small town exactly like country. sonoma in wine country yeah <laughs> okay. it's called prosperity okay. Um, the names of different things kind of like were pulled from different stuff in right, my life. Obviously. But essentially, the, the, the premise is is that Carrie is friends with the mayor. Mm -hmm. She discovers him dead in his office. Okay. <gasps> and the town gossips start um, talking about her and accuse oh. her of murdering the mayor in a dark ritual. Oh, so she like has a satanic to, sacrifice. Yeah, thing. so she okay. sets out to clear her name, but... Throughout all of this, she mm -hmm. ends up meeting a bunch of people. She finds a love interest that's maybe got a shady past. Is she who she says she is? We don't know. And then she's still seeing tarot clients throughout all of this. Because she's got to make some well. money. She's, she's got to pay money. off the debt. She's got to pay off her debt, and that's how she does it. And <laughs> With tarot so, cards. Through tarot cards. I, she has a pet that accompanies her. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, Who's, we can't forget. His, his name is Waggery, and he's a raven. And he talks <laughs> sometimes. He, he's a mimic. He's a mimic. He is. He's a good mimic, actually. And, yeah. And, and he can dismantle doorknobs. So that's extremely, helpful, doorknobs, so extremely helpful he, plot device. He, he can, he can <laughs> he's got no thumbs, but he can do his beak. Yeah, he does. He can, and uh, so, uh -huh. so Waggery is a raven. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of made a, a quick dramatis persona so far. I have oh, not, great. I, I got to confess, I have not finished the book. So good. I, got I was it. worried you were going to spoil it. No, today. I got it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sent an advanced copy. It's a PDF. Yeah. I printed it out, read as many, and then I got the yeah. actual copy. It's an amazing copy. It feels like it's a nice size book much better than my printouts i know uh, it feels it like yesterday. you know like you're getting something like a real book like yeah, a real like it is a real book it's a real book so yeah. part of the dramatis persona in addition to mm -hmm. carrie detweiler waggery there's aunt inez who mm -hmm. has passed on has passed on but, <clears throat> but she still shows up in in memories right she kind of shows up and has and, advice and, and offers advice and tarot tips okay tarot tips because that's where carrie learned how to do tarot cards was from, from the aunt inez, inez. Mm -hmm. okay and then daisy chatterley mm -hmm. the beautiful local reporter who is always using tabloid style alliterative headlines yeah Yes. There's you, a lot of wordplay in this book. Yeah, Bethany, <laughs> you, I mean, you're good at wordplay mm -hmm. because what people might not know is you you also have a job doing copywriting. That's right. I'm a professional copywriter for a large national retailer. Large national retailer. Uh -huh. And, and have been have, for almost 17 years. And people have seen your work. They have. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> and when I they see have. stuff, I'm like, Bethany that, wrote Bethany that. Wrote <laughs> that. <laughs> I get a mailer and I tell my wife, like, that's Bethany's. Um, so here's an example of one of the headlines. You say that uh, Daisy Chatterley printed uh, Witch Hunt. Tarot card priestesses craven raven spells hell for waterfowl. Yeah. <laughs> There's a duck pond. Yeah. Oh, so that's actually that's uh -huh. a, a plot device slash character. There is a duck pond. There is a duck pond. In the middle of Prosperity's there Plaza. Is. Mm -hmm. And that will come into play into the plot. It does. Um but let's back up a little bit. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Let me just kind of set set I wanted Please. to talk about this a little bit. So okay. When we talk about mysteries, so right. this is a mystery. So there are different levels of okay. mystery okay. writing. Right. Um, you've got your police procedural. You've got your missing this girl. You've got your these types okay. of things. Dead spread is a very specific genre of mystery, which mm -hmm. is called a cozy mystery. And you've mentioned that to me before. And I don't know what that means. Can you yeah, so it? I'll tell you. Okay, so okay. a cozy mystery is essentially you've got a few tropes that have to be right. kind of attached to it. A lot okay. of times it's a woman sleuth. Uh, can, there can be men sleuths, okay. but a, most of the time it's women. Okay. Um, they're always an amateur sleuth. Got it. So not a professional PI. Right. Not a professional okay. PI. So this is somebody who's been thrown into a situation where the stakes are high. If they don't solve the mystery themselves, uh, okay. something bad will happen to them. To them. So there, there's some motivation okay. there okay. for that uh, amateur to take on Got this it. case, as it were. Okay. Um, 
the the murder happens off screen so you're not gonna have a lot of blood and guts and gore there's okay. not gonna be a lot of swearing okay um the sex scenes if there are any are gonna happen off the page right. there is some romance and relationship building mm -hmm. but those are kind of the baselines of, of what a cozy what mystery makes it cozy. is <clears throat> and cozy is an actual thing i could look this up oh for sure yeah. it exists yeah and okay. i set out to actually write specifically a cozy i wanted to do something um that was a mystery but didn't have all the police stuff and like CSI right. stuff and you know fungal would, swabs. Would, and would, all these would, That's the for a different book. Swabs. The old fungal swab. Would, like, <laughs> would, like, um, like if people understand like uh, the TV show Murder She Wrote. Exactly. Is that kind Cozy of like mystery. Okay. Yes, okay. exactly. And so a lot of times you'll see them. They're set in bakeries. Right. Like Le Pascal's. Right, Le Pascal's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that would be a great really? or a bookstore. Oh, bookstores. Knitting good. shops. Um, you've got people with cat solving mysteries. You've got people with dog solving mysteries, penguins, you know, whatever you want. I chose a raven. Because did you say penguin? I, I did. I don't know if that exists. Murder but maybe I'll in write Patagonia it. Express. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. But so that's what a cozy means. So I want to make sure that we're clear on that. It's it's a PG 13 book. Right. You know, this is not something that's. It's not like James Patterson. It's not salacious. Or that, it's King not. Or, okay. It's a very. Um, you know, and there's a lot of that feeling of, of a cozy town, okay. quirky characters, yes, okay, funny good. names, lots of puns and more. Yeah, so it's funny. Thank you for the funny names. Yeah, You're almost Dickensian. If in, I in was going to talk to you about that, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. Let's talk about Dickens. Well, well, we, well it looks like <laughs> the names you have: Daisy Chatterley, yep. Miriam Cringe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, Preston Brick, so Brick, uh, for those who don't know, is the, the measure of sugar in a grape, the uh -huh. sweetness or whatever. Um, Stormy Portwood. Stormy Portwood. Mm -hmm. Emma Fortnightly. Emma Fortnightly. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite is, I don't know if he's uh, English or French, but Officer Bucket or uh -huh. Officer Bouquet. Officer Bucket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a direct lift from Dickens, by the is, way. Yeah, That's so a, I totally stole that from my, th I believe it's Bleak House. There are no new <laughs> ideas. That's yeah. the important thing. Uh, no, There's I, always... I, a in every single one of my books right. that I've ever written, there is a character named after a Dickens. There's character. an homage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you like Dickens? Did you read a lot of Dickens? Dickens. I read all of it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Do you like Bronte and stuff like that? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Jim. I'm oh, a female God. person who writes horror. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Bronte. What about all the sisters? What a, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Line them up. Line them up. So you, but you, you like that era. Of yeah. literature. Oh, okay. for sure. Yeah. And it's good. It's very ornate. Yes. Um, good stories, plot twists. Plot twists, right. I think, is what I respond to them, particularly okay. in Dickens. You know, the way that his stuff over time was serialized, so much right. of it. Right. And you learn a lot from how to structure stakes, mm -hmm. which are, you know, something that the main character can lose. Mm -hmm. Um and cliffhangers from Dickens. Right. So That's where you get all that. And, and mysteries, too, which is why, you know, I was trying to write literary fiction. I was trying to write women's fiction, all these very highbrow things. <laughs> Right. Which is wonderful if that's right, what you want to do. Uh, but I realized there was a lot that I didn't know mm -hmm. um, about misdirection, about red herrings, about these things that do come into play in more mainstream commercial fiction or literary fiction. Okay. These are skills that you have to learn as a writer. So I decided to write a mystery just to see mm -hmm. and to see if I enjoyed it. And I loved it so much that now I've got um, this one and two more coming this out. This was a trial run. Yeah. But you, you're doing it three times now, which yeah, is great. Yeah, so we've got, we've got book two coming out probably toward the end of the year, and then book three hasn't quite been <laughs> written yet. Okay. We've got to head. figure some things out. But it'll probably okay. be next spring or next summer for the full trilogy. The full uh, Dead Spread trilogy. Uh, does, and do do the characters stay the same as far as the main protagonist? Yes, in, Carrie okay. Detweiler will carry through. Will carry through she with will. her dead. Yeah, she will. Um, okay, so that's that's actually great. The the cozy mm -hmm. thing because um, do you, I want to go work back. Did you set out to become a writer when you were younger and say I'm going to write stories, or were you like I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do something else? Well, that's that's how, a great. How did you, that, how did you a, come that, to this? It's a really different kind of way I came. My mother's a professional novelist, so okay. it's really important <clears throat> to know that I was around a writer, a published writer, a successful, mm -hmm. award-winning published writer. Okay, you know, as, your, as a up. child. Uh, yeah, and so I saw. I know what it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, it it is a tremendous amount of isolation. Mm. Um, there are things that you don't get to do because you're busy working or trying to meet a deadline. Um, it's very hard to get published. Right. So I didn't take it lightly. Mm. I knew how hard my mom worked and I mm. knew what she had to do in order to be successful. And, you know, I definitely inherited her uh, clever turn of phrase and okay, <laughs> her so ability to pun. So and your all. mom was good with wordplay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's the best. Yeah. Okay. She, yeah. 
she's the best and she's really good also with kind of arcane facts i don't know if i've ever told you that she beat me in trivial pursuit once in one turn <laughs> yeah so that's the kind she's of big like, brain i'm gonna run the board kind of on big brain stuff. So oh, okay okay i ended up in my career working in a lot of jobs that required writing like mm -hmm. public relations and mm -hmm. things of that nature now i'm a professional copywriter full time mm -hmm. um but i hadn't I mean, I'd always kind of dabbled in stories and stuff, but I really just started getting serious about getting published right. um, about th three or four years ago. Okay. And so since then, I started doing, um, I started out with short stories and started getting those published. Because you write a lot of short stories. Yeah. At least I'm, I'm, I follow on LinkedIn and, and you have your own website. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes they are not cozy stories. No, no. Your, your short stories are actually quite dark. They are. Yeah. Right. So in addition to the ghillie suit, you're also wearing all black, a la Emily Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes. so that's perhaps your kind of gothic dark side. Yeah, I actually there. prefer the deeper horror mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that I write, but I'm still so in love with this cozy mystery. Mm -hmm. I'm just having so much fun with it because it is a little Dickensian. It's all, you know, what, right. what can we throw at him now? You know, what twist can we throw in right. there? Right, it's like, oh my gosh. And that's yeah. the nice thing about the serial and the cliffhangers when he would write them in magazines. Yeah. You'd have a reason to go pick it up. Reason to go pick it up. So you page turners. You mentioned Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> I did. Waggery has a girlfriend. <laughs> She does. Her name is Legia. Uh huh. That's a, a, a Edgar Allan Poe reference. Yes, if I recall. Okay, so you do callbacks to what you like to do. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you started writing a cozy because you yeah. thought you would try it out, but now it sounds like you're gonna go. You know, you're not gonna write this dark, not like Lovecraftian horror, which you yeah. might do. Yeah. But you're gonna engage in this funny, light, cozy stuff. Right. But do callbacks. Do some callbacks. You know, because I, like I find that cozy readers, they're, they tend to be very literary. They right. may enjoy a lighthearted mystery when they're reading on the beach right. or whatever. But these are people, who, these are readers. These are people right. who know about literature. Um, and they love a reference. They love, you know, right. within my mysteries, I do try to plant those little Easter eggs. Like right. you had texted me this morning about Walker and Lister, <laughs> right. who are the town gossips. And, walk, and I've been waiting for somebody to ask me. <laughs> Because Walker and Lister are are the couple who run the um, a coffee the shop coffee right shop, which the, the non corporate coffee the shop. non corporate cuppa. They're yeah. they're the local guys, and they're married to each other, and mm -hmm. they're named after a, a very famous lesbian couple, mm -hmm. Ann Lister and Ann Walker, um, which were featured in a show recently called Gentleman Jack. Oh, interesting. So okay. I'm trying to pull in kind of all of these little twist that if you re read a little deeper if you don't just scan it you'll start right. seeing all the little, like little references and yeah. stuff there um speak about reading things deeper mm -hmm. tarot yes tarot cards play a big part of the plot of this book they do what is tarot <laughs> assume assume you're a, well, a dorky podcast guy who, who just knows like it's something that they do in Sebastopol, but you don't know much more about it. So can you tell me? You know, what actually, is there, it looks like there's a psychic right across the street. I think there is a psychic, and I'm pretty sure that's kind of what Ter uh, Carrie's cottage looks like a little okay. bit. Well, okay, okay, tarot cards are a method of divination. Mm -hmm. Um, they've gone through very, you know, numerous different iterations throughout mm -hmm. the centuries. Um, the most common one that people see now is the Rider Waite deck, which I think was actually developed in the early 1900s. So it's actually okay. not that old. Okay. Um, I refer to that kind of vaguely in the book because of copyright issues. <laughs> Wait, uh, it's a copyrighted tarot deck? Well, no, actually, it's. I do believe it is in the public domain now, okay. but I didn't want to risk it. So Makes sense. Let's just, right. But I do read, I read tarot cards okay. um, rather inexpertly. Right. I'm not, um, I'm trained at it, but I'm not very good at it all the time. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, so essentially I brought my deck. Okay. So you use the deck um, essentially the way Carrie says you do. You ask it a question. Mm -hmm. um, you lay it out in a variety of different spreads dead spread ding ding um and you read them to face down like so i don't know what's on top well, no you can you can flip them over oh you can and you can read them you read them like a story oh, you read them like okay. a story it's basically helping you write the story of your own life and so how like, many how many different cards or how many cards are in a tarot deck oh God, i think there's like one, 107 108 and they're all different types yeah here pick one just pick a card, just any pick a card. card. Okay, okay, should I show you? Are you gonna guess it? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna guess. I'm not magic. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> is it David Copperfield. Let's so see I, it. Let's so see I show it. it to you. Yeah. Okay. So you. Oh, this is very interesting. Okay. okay. So you pick the Empress card. Okay. And what does that mean? So this this is a major Arcana card. Okay. So and what that means is that you need to pay specific attention. Uh, the universe is trying to tell you something about oh. um, abundance, fertility. 
Uh, <laughs> watch it, Tim. My kids are old enough. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks kind of like a Ouija planchette down it here. It does. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Empress card in my book, um, Carrie gives all of her characters a okay. tarot card assignment. She okay. thinks of them as this card, and this would be Emma Fortnightly. Okay. She's right. a beautiful woman surrounded by luxurious things. So, right. okay. you know, there are, you know, throughout the ages, there have been multiple interpretations of all the different cards, but a lot of times you can just kind of take them and look at them and what, how do they relate to you and how do they relate to your own life? Okay. And write a story for yourself about where you are in this moment. Are you feeling particularly fertile uh. and abundant, <laughs> Tim? <laughs> I have been trying to garden. How, did you go right? see Barbie? Is that what it is? I did go see Barbie and I loved it. See, so maybe you're Barbie was fantastic. I know, you you're know tapping that? into your like inner good. Barbie. I am. All right, well, there. good so, to the Empress. Yeah, so that's what tarot is. And, and okay. Carrie, my main character, uses tarot um, to make money and also right. to help herself. Um, although she does make it very clear, and I think this is mm -hmm. important, that she is not a psychic. But, okay, Do are psychics different than... Yes. So a psychic... <clears throat> you can be psychic and a tarot card reader. Okay, but you don't have but to. You be don't a, have to be. Got you it. Can, can you be a psychic who doesn't do tarot? Absolutely. Got it. Yes. Okay. As a matter of fact, I have a psychic. Oh, you should have her on the show, and she's never used um, tarot, tarot cards. Yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. That's I, when we're doing like, what will my future podcast be? We bring right. a psychic. And tell me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I also like uh, it's interesting because like those seem to be archetypes of these different characters yeah. throughout time, mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of like you have these different characters in your book too so you kind of have people who are i don't want to say i might be reading too much into this but no like read. that's what we do different, with tarot. <laughs> different tarot card people yeah in their cards and you mentioned the empress and, and emma fortnightly and emma fortnightly who mm. am i allowed to say what her relationship was to somebody in the book no that's I can't a spoiler say tim well it's like it's like, it's, it's like chapter four <laughs> Is it? I think I got to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I got, you know, I got to it. Uh, it's like on page. Yeah, it's in the first hundred pages. Yeah, okay. I, I don't I won't often say remember. I won't say anything. No, you know what? It was, I right. wrote this book three years ago. <laughs> you know, what was going on three years ago in our lifetime? COVID. Oh, gosh, yeah. right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. COVID. Also, I was part of this kind of writer's collective, and I wanted to... Um, crank something out really okay. fast. So, yeah, so I, I cranked this out really fast, and then I've rewritten it probably... I've rewritten it a lot. You have? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. once, edit thrice. Yeah. I mean, more than that, but yes. Yeah. You go yeah. Through it. I've gotten a lot better about like avoiding those pitfalls in the first, okay. in the first draft. <laughs> Let me ask, how, how much of Sonoma Valley is in there, Sonoma? Because you have the mayor who likes tourism and thinks the Duck Pond, which we have, mm -hmm. um, would help with tourism and maybe an expansion of it. Mm -hmm. But they also have the police riding around in 1920s and 30s style jalopies. I just thought that was fun. <laughs> I can't. I just, Which shows that, like, we have crime, but it's really slow moving. Because <laughs> you got to catch right, it. Right, except when the mayor turns up dead. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> it. he didn't go very far, did he? Shocking. Didn't go very far. <laughs> um, so, like, how did you take, you know, what what is real from Sonoma and other places, like maybe Healdsburg or places that have a plaza yeah. and places you live in? What is just sort of flights of fancy? Oh, well, obviously the, the patrol cars are flights of fancy, <laughs> but that's a really great idea. You should totally do that. Well, no, it reminded me of, like, Toontown <laughs> with a Roger Rabbit or yeah. something like that. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. And then, um, you know, so you've got the mayor who lives um, in a gated community, much right. like Armstrong right. Estates. Right. Right. Um, you've got people, th there's kind of the push-pull of gentrification is happening mm -hmm. in this town in prosperity, right. which is very similar to what's happening in Sonoma. Some mm -hmm. Or maybe mm -hmm. has already been sort of solved in Sonoma. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got George Weber, who... Uh, Uncle Grist. Who is Uncle Grist. <laughs> right. In my book, and um, you know he's he's just you know the man about the gadfly right. uh, knows everything about Sonoma and has a historical interest in Sonoma. I've also I used some of the stuff I used in my uh, mystery mission scavenger okay. hunts to kind of plant clues right. around town. Well, that's why. So the mystery missions were mm -hmm. for those who aren't familiar. Uh, was a fabulous but slightly short-lived because COVID did <clears throat> hurt you on this. I think we did it for like five years. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's, that's pretty, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I know short-lived in, in, in the scale of cinemas. Yeah. Time here, but, um, <laughs> that people could hire you to do these kind of neat, they're almost like treasure hunts, but you had to go find clues yeah. that required both wordplay and working together. Uh, it was a very clever concept. It and, was really and fun. And you, you were really good at finding interesting things around the plaza that most people don't see yeah right and i still even walk by certain places I'm like oh that was in her mystery missions i love you know, to hear that that, that, was, that was really neat that, was that really makes clever. me so happy well really i would clever. i'm we're thinking about maybe ginning it up again but i'm kind okay. of busy with books yeah um but so i use some of those skills here but it is it is a i mean i really think that it's not really mm. a matter of reading between the lines here i really right. think that if anybody sits down with this for more than five minutes they'll be like <laughs> sonoma yeah it is sonoma it so is tell me about flint 
Burns. What about him, Tim? What about <laughs> <laughs> you mean our illustrious head of, of, of tourism? Here's the note I took just as a get the characters. <laughs> I wrote Flint Burns, head of the local tourism office and most likely the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I might have been reading That's more right. yeah, it's, into it's, it's, it's it than I thought. Dead spread, a Flint Burns <laughs> mystery. That's what we should call that. Um, yeah, that's based on you, thank and, you. and a couple thank of you. other people, right, actually. Kind of yeah, so I don't. I didn't want you to. There are some negative things about Flint. Everybody has some, some everyone good. Everyone does. And everyone has good. If I pulled another card, I'd find something negative. That oh. right. Oh. Let's find out what your negatives are. Oh, really? Because right if you now. turn them upside down, that might mean a reverse card. Not right? exactly. Oh, okay. That's not exactly Oh, true. God. Okay. Unless you go. pull the what? Empress again, that'd be really fun. It's just a deck full of Empresses. Is, oh, my gosh. Wait. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. This is terrible. Oh, no. What'd you get? Oh, God. The Hanged Man. Oh, no. This is good. That's I mean, good? This means anything can happen. Re that anything can happen? Anything can happen. Yeah. So okay. if you... if you He's hanging upside down. It though. also means on a tree? that... Um, okay. So there's a couple fun things with this card. Um, and I think we talk about it, actually, in Dead Spread or one of the books, anyway. Um, when you pull this, if you're trying to make a decision, this this really means that you you can you will you are really leaning. You don't know which way to go, and okay. that anything can happen based on your decision. Um, it's also the number four, okay, um, which means something in numerology. Okay, I don't know what. Oh, okay. Um, but it's you know <laughs> you, when you look at it in the spread next to other cards, a lot right. of times you can get clarification on what those other cards mean in relation. Oh, to Oh, I got you. It kind of reference so like, card. If you're in between something, this might be telling you that it uh, could okay. swing. Okay, either, either way. I'm oh, sorry, okay. I hit your microphone. Yeah, jeez, yes. look, you're swinging into the microphone <laughs> there. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, okay, I love this. But, but before we go too far into this, if people want to order this book, that's the most important thing. Really, the most important yeah. thing. Yeah. How do they get their hands on this book? Well, that's a great question, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, because I do know that you have offered to sell some in the visitor center. <laughs> at 453 First Treaty. <laughs> so, so that's a couple of readers, readers uh, books, books in good. Sonoma. I just stopped by there um, okay. to thank them. They are the first local bookseller who's offered to carry. Readers books. I know. Yeah, thank you so good much, job, readers. Thank and they're you. on Napa Street, job, just Eddie. like we mm -hmm. are, just across the plaza. And um, yeah, pick it up there okay. if you can, or pick it up from you guys down at the uh, visitor center. It's also available on Amazon if you're okay. unavailable to okay. get out. Okay. Um, but I have also uh, ordered it um, to be included in the Sonoma Library System as well. Oh, fantastic! So you may good be job. able to check it out from the library. Okay, too, that's so. good. Good for so, you. So yeah, okay. I like that. But it's on Barnes and No. It's everywhere. It's on the usual spots. It's all the usual spots. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then did you did you publish this? Like, do you have to? Because I know that, like, publishing is completely changed yeah. the animal uh, from when your mom was writing yes when yeah. you know you'd put out your 120 menthol into an ashtray and <laughs> you would stuff mother would be horrified <laughs> if you thought she'd smell <laughs> you stuff, it, <laughs> stuff it in an envelope it's oh, off yeah. to new york oh yeah and hope that it, someone reads it oh yeah she used to type she actually typed all of her books out on a smith corona typewriter oh, awesome. and had carbon paper oh right because like, she wanted, your copy. She wanted right. a copy and and, the, and i remember her doing that and everything so yeah it's very different now right so now you can if you if you want to try it you can find a publisher create the book yes uh, which is great because mm -hmm. um, it definitely gets your, your thing out there but you mm -hmm. don't get a big advance check right exactly so I'm footing I'm footing all the bill up Got front it. for this wow okay. and um, and that's fine because there are all these wonderful tools online now for self-published what we call an indie author okay um, I, like I use okay. a program called vellum okay uh, to Ooh. lay my to do the interior layout which is amazing and then I have George who does all my design <laughs> and he does all the, good, the covers good to be uh, in a relationship with a, uh, a filmmaker slash, slash artist graphic, slash, graphic slash artist slash yeah. genius at everything slash animated, um, so yeah. yeah so he does all of that and, and yeah we're just putting them out ourselves that's which great gives complete creative control mm -hmm. they're good and bad with both um you know i would love to be traditionally published i certainly mm -hmm. have tried to get traditionally mm -hmm. published it's not something i'm against at all mm -hmm. um it's just like you said the landscape has changed quite a bit and there mm -hmm. are there are just certain things i i was kind of tired of dealing with and right. um so I, I put these two books out this summer myself that doesn't mean that i'm closed off to traditional publishing right. moving down the line i would love you'll, it you'll take that big fat I'll check take it. from penguin or whoever's still out there random yeah, house you know sometimes it's yeah i mean sometimes it's not that big of a check though you know? I know. so it's like oh well, yeah well it's also but i like those you mentioned independent publishing it's sort of like independent music independent artists really when you're buying from someone like you you're supporting a local artist right and not like some big company somewhere it's like I know Bethany sat there in the woods in her ghillie suit typing away. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I typed it in my ghillie suit. <laughs> your ghillie suit. Uh, typing away. Everyone knows when the ghillie suit comes out. <laughs> Don't bother Bethany. Don't bother Bethany. <laughs> She's right. You can't right even see her. You can't even see her. Where is she? <laughs> Just the glow, She's the 120 the, minute the ghillie suit again. <laughs> um, but, but no, I think it's important that we support local writers and artists and musicians and pottery people and whatnot i totally agree um because you know there is 
right now we're in the, while we're recording this, there's a SAG after strikes going on, and a lot of writers are being cut out, and the yeah. actors, and it's it's important to put more dollars into the creator's pocket instead I think so. of you know other people's. Yeah, and AI yeah. is coming up to kill us all. So you know, write Skynet. We thought Skynet was going to kill us. No, they're just going to write you know yeah. poems. I saw the saddest thing on Twitter the other day. Somebody had posted, you know, I never envisioned a future where AI would be creating all the art, music, and books, and we'd all just be working regular jobs. There it is. And I just went, oh God, that hurt. It's but yeah, I mean, it's all over again. It's very true. Yeah. It's um, there are. A lot of talented writers, yeah. in particular, out there yeah. who are not getting published for by traditional publishing for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of there aren't as many agents as there used to be. There mm -hmm. aren't as many slots for writers at these big publishing houses. Mm -hmm. If you do get in, you can get kind of shuffled down and ignored, and you still have to do all of your own marketing anyway. Got it. So it's a struggle. So when you see somebody who has put together uh, the time to create and publish and design and do all of this work to sell their own book. Yeah, throw them a bone, man, yeah. buy their book. Yep. Um, when I'm, I'm just gonna, for full transparency, um, when you think about a writer and paying a writer, writers don't make that much money. We don't mm. make a lot of money on this. And so far this has cost me a lot of money to kind of put out and get out there in the system, which I'm happy to pay because I believe in these stories. Um, but for example, if you, if you buy my paperback, I get 83 cents. 83 cents. Yeah. 83 cents is my, and that's my take. Wow. So, you know, it's just, it's the smallest little thing. But if you right. can read that person's book, buy their book, get it out there, tell other people right. about it, review the book online. This is how you can support local writers and artists okay. and other people. Because, um, yeah. like I said, there's just tons of talented people who are being overlooked for reasons that have nothing just to do. Publishing is not a meritocracy. Right. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I have Good to say. point. Yeah, and it's a wonderful business, and I love. I love right. that I'm doing this, and I would still love to be a part of the big show. Right. I'm um, not criticizing that at all, but right. you know, there. Sometimes you have to just put yourself out there and, and, really and hope they be so good they can't ignore you that maybe you can get that. Contract. No, I like that. Well, yeah. speaking. Of, okay, so you've actually you mentioned your second book you've already written your yes. first book. Uh, you have that one here as well. Can yes. we get a quick shout out to that one just so I know about it? It's called Sasquatch Baby. This is Sasquatch Baby. I'm really proud and of Sasquatch it's Baby. Liter can I talk about it? I've, I've, I read this one. It's shorter. Read, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, it's about a woman uh, who uh, moves into a cabin which is empty and, and mm -hmm. it's a we don't know what happened to the former owners. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of takes place in Northern California because mm -hmm. that's where they believe Sasquatches live, where they actually do. Not they do. I mean... They really live up in Mendocino County <laughs> and Humboldt County. Well, you know, their, their habitat so, is getting so encroached. Yeah, so please them. don't be afraid of Sasquatches in Sonoma. <laughs> be, be afraid of the ducks and the raven. <laughs> um, but no, so this woman uh, moves up there, and she's up in the, in the woods, and, and she befriends, uh, of sort, a Sasquatch. Yes. And it results in a child. It does. <laughs> and Hilarity <that's>, ensues. <laughs> And there's like a secret cabal of people who help people in trouble, and they're, yeah. oh, they're not right. where yeah, you the, think they would be located, but there's like a secret the, the group. secret, The secret underground general well, store. General store, <laughs> the, old, the old mercantile yeah. people. Uh -huh. um, what I like about this book is that I, if you've ever been up in Northern California, mm -hmm. you really feel like you have you know these people. Yeah. Right. And it's possible because there are, you go everywhere, and in addition to trees you can drive through, there's every kind of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, yeah. Giga that you can buy. That's right. Um, and you wrote that one first, right? You published Sasquatch yes, Baby first? Yes, that's right. I actually wrote, I wrote Dead Spread first, but okay. something happened with an agent and I thought they were going to take it and then they didn't. Mm. And then, and then um, yeah, so I published Sasquatch Baby first. Oh, good job. Yeah. Right, and that's also <laughs> available on your website too? Yes. Uh, it's available com. everywhere and it's everywhere. also going to be available at Readers. They're oh, gonna, great. Gonna good job. It, they're okay. going to carry that one as well. So mm -hmm. I love that you have, you have two books yeah. out there and two more coming for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Look at you. You're cranking through. At least through. two more this year. And you're still doing your day job. Yes. Of writing for a major company. That's that right. sells stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. Is it Apple? No. <laughs> Is it Del Monte? No. Okay. You're going to tell me? You know where I work. Too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We're ready. We're, we've come to that time. We've come to that time where you're going to help me answer questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, well, and again, for people, the book is called Dead Spread. And I'll, Dead I'll Spread. It. Yeah, it's I'll the first it. Dead Spread. Yeah. First Dead Spread the, one. It looks like a tarot card. Right. The House of Cards yeah. mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very good. You can find it wherever you find fine books, but we suggest buying it at a local spot mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really supporting a local writer. But yeah, you, you. Uh, tarot card helps you answer questions. 
right? It does. You, you have a question, you ask the deck, and then you kind of interpret what happens. Right. Similar fashion, segue alert, we run two visitor centers where we get lots of questions for people coming to Sonoma. Okay. And they want to ask us questions. All right, right? of course they do. And you're going to help me in this segment that we call We, we get, get, get Questions. questions. Okay. It's <laughs> cleverly it's good, named. Good question. I mean, you haven't <laughs> seen these yet, have you? I don't think so. No. 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 Do I need so, to put my glasses on? Uh, it's up to you. I'll okay. read them to you. Okay. But I will read them and then, and then you can help me respond. So basically, you're going to act like you are one of our visitor center volunteers or staff. Oh, so I'm asking you the question. No, I'm going to ask you the question. Oh, I'm, I'm the, the staff. You're the staff. Okay. <laughs> what is my motivation, Tim? <laughs> Yes, and. And C. Yes, and. Yes, and. So basically, ima imagine, okay, if I'm you acting. will, there's a town called Prosperity. Mm -hmm. Imagine Flint Burns has a volunteer. Yes. And the, and the volunteer works at the cart in front of the visitor That's center. That's right. Okay. And people come up and ask questions. Oh, I should go over there and read people's cards. You totally should. You can totally do that. We're always looking for guest, uh, special guest stars at okay, the visitor center. I'm in. So I'll, I'll come down next week. Here's a question we got. Here we go. <laughs> okay, yes. We're visiting from Miami. Yes. Welcome. Oh, that's good. And I was here a long time ago on a bus tour. And I remember there was something about a way to identify all the trees in the plaza. Yeah. Am I remembering this correctly? You absolutely are. Welcome from Miami. We're so happy to see you here. Good job. Welcome to Sonoma you're County. So, you're good at this. You're well, I love people. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm a real people person. There, there absolutely is a way to identify all the trees in the plaza. And mm -hmm. let me get that for you because this okay. is a really fun way to get no. Do, uh, uh, <laughs> now, now you're freaking out. This is a really great way to get right. to know. Right. Uh, Sonoma, because not only will you see these trees on the plaza, you'll see them at wineries, you'll see them around, and I you'll feel more grounded in your experience I here, love that. Uh, knowing what trees are here. So yeah, let me get that for okay, you. And you're referring to our plaza tree map, I think. I am referring to the plaza tree map. That's amazing. It's a really cool thing. It is. I think Tim's honor thought of it. I, <laughs> I did. I wish I did. It was like one of those cool things. Like, I wish I did think of that. But it's amazing. It's got all the trees that are in the plaza. It's actually really great. Uh, yeah. my, my favorite thing to do when you're at the cart and someone comes up. Yeah. We came here to see a redwood. And I point to the redwoods 10 feet away. Yeah, that's right. Like, we'll you can go Bingo home Bongo. now. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's your uncle. Have fun. <laughs> exactly. Thank you I'm for stopping here. by. You know, they got London plane trees. They've got eucalyptus or slash gum trees. They've got cypresses. They've got cedars uh we've got plum trees so any kind of tree the plaza eight acres has a lot of them and it is kind of fun it's to go eight out acres eight acres wow that's actually a lot bigger than i thought how big is it in prosperity <laughs> <laughs> seven and a half i don't know oh, i can't George even imagine the other day he's like what's this character's last name i'm like oh. i don't know <laughs> schniggle bottoms she's schniggle in three books I'm like, oh, <laughs> i forgot to give her a last name um yeah, so the okay. trees are good, and then also in those trees, as you know, are birds, which I love. Oh, you like birds? I do like birds. Oh, so that that would so, be the next. So, but how would I one. identify a bird? Like if I, I it's like a craven <laughs> well, raven. Things that fly. <laughs> I don't oh, know. We'd have, we might are. have to do a bird thing for bird thing. for the plaza as well, which right. I think Birds people, people would find. So what they there? I've been to a hotel actually over mm -hmm. in Bodega Bay that mm -hmm. does a. Um, you hand they they give you like the bird sheet. It's and all you can, snowy plover. <laughs> yeah. It's all it's just it's gall. just plovers. Plover plovers. Plovers are plenty. Plovers. And plovers. <laughs> We're just lousy with plovers <laughs> on the coast. Um, but yeah, so you check it off okay. and you go through and then you get like something free at wine hour oh, or whatever. It's so like, like that bird could, bingo thing. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's all in the honor system, obviously, but I would uh, never I, lie about it. No, yeah, bird. Totally. of course I saw the Arctic turn. Of course I did. I did. Why not? Why he wouldn't was, I? He was eating a bald eagle. Right. Right that, there. Because that happens. All the time. <laughs> uh, you like, uh, do you ever use Merlin, that app? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and identifies birds uh -huh. by the sound. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're a bird person. I know you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Tim. Well, bird person, here's another question for okay. you. Okay. What time of the year is not a busy mm. or crowded month to visit? <sighs> okay, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to really have to take a swing on this one because I'm not totally it. sure. I would have to say January mm. is probably a quieter time in Sonoma, but it's probably a lovely time to visit because what happens in, Son in Sonoma in January is pruning. Uh, we're getting some rain. There's going to be a lot of cozy afternoons in front of a fire for you and your guest. And uh, I highly recommend coming in January and also during our busier times, which are more festive and more people around. But I think January is probably, I feel like I'm in a job interview. You did a great job on that. Okay. <laughs> January. <laughs> You're in a job interview and we're not paying you. Okay. So good job. <laughs> You're right. Actually, that's a great answer. So Q1 of the calendar, January, February, mm -hmm. March are yeah. the lowest visitation months and mm -hmm. it's a great time to come visit. You are right. It's the green period. Yeah, it's green. We, right. We get a little bit more moisture in mm -hmm. the air. Sometimes that represents its rain. Um, and pruning is going on. It's quieter. It's a good time to sit by the fire, fire. a glass of wine and read a cozy mystery. I mean, if you're not, if you're not coming in January... 
Right. Picking up your copy of Dead Spread and your tree map. Right. At the visitor center, then you're really missing a key uh, component to an enjoyable trip. Right. The, the perfect experience. It's a perfect Sonoma experience. It's, it's Dead Spread, Cabernet, Fire, tree map. Oh, my God. It's right there. And a tour with George Weber. And a tour with George Weber. Yeah. Um, this one's seasonal. Okay, Gravenstein apples. What is a Gravenstein apple, and why should I care? All right, I think I might have an answer to this. Okay. I think I can. I think I can pull something. You got out. this one. Okay. Um, a Gravenstein apple. Sonoma County is known for its Gravenstein apples. It's mm -hmm. a very specific varietal of apple that actually flourishes here in Sonoma County. It probably, probably has something to do with Luther Burbank. Okay. Um. And so you should care because we're one of the only places, this is one of the only places in the world where you can get one, if right. not the only place. <laughs> you can get pies and ciders yep. uh, made from Gravenstein apples. That's great. Yeah. Good job. Okay. So you're right. So we, um, and <laughs> <laughs> coming up is the Gravenstein Apple Fair in West Sonoma County. Oh, that's right. Um, the Gravenstein Apple was, it's on the Arc of Taste by the Slow Food. Oh, people. I love that. Yeah. yeah okay, so the sure. people who are like really big into like heritage brand you know yeah. the, the common apples we have now are granny smith red delicious yeah pink lady uh, Pink Lady. but a lot of like the red delicious and granny smith don't have a lot of good taste because they were made for shipping and storage that's correct so if you remember uh in the 80s you'd eat a granny smith and it, it tasted kind of tart or you'd eat a red delicious and it was tasted like paste right they weren't good apples because by then the washington apple industry had you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. i mean eradicate a lot of different varieties so the Gravenstein apple people are like, we have to save the grass. Right, right. And they think the Gravenstein came here from, actually from Crimea, Crimea area or from Russia when the Russians settled at Fort Ross. They think they planted. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. They came here, oh, spread God, out to a, West there's County. There's a book in there somewhere. Isn't there it? is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's got to have a pun in there. Or something. Oh, Well, boy. you know, the reason why we have the, the barracks and the soldiers here mm -hmm. was so the, the Mexican settlers and Spanish settlers, the Mexican settlers, wouldn't trade with the Russians. Oh. It was to keep the mercantile system going. Yeah, so the Russians had a trade there, but there was a secret mission to walk to Fort Ross, to Santa Rosa, to meet in the middle okay. where the Russians and the Mexicans met. God, I've done that high. Done, done, done. <laughs> I have done that high. And you still ended and up And there are Gravensteins up there. I've seen them <laughs> growing. So Gravenstein apple, is a, it yeah. doesn't ship very well, but it's really good for sauces, ciders, and pies. And, and pies. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah, should care. Sure. You I should totally, care. You should absolutely care. Well, this kind of yeah. goes back to, you know, you do the thing you're supposed to do in the place you're supposed to do it. There you go. This is what I believe. Okay, that's good. You know, when you travel and right. you're in Sonoma, you yeah. you winery, you grab a steam apple, right. you read Dead Spread you by read Bethany Browning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you do the things that are created in the place right. that you went. That's you right. Know, don't go to Starbucks. No. Go to Pascal's. Go to Pascal's. Talk to one of the Pascal's. There's two of them. Yeah, there's Pascal or Pascal. you can talk to both. <laughs> uh, either one. I mean, I'm sure they're both very friendly. She, she speaks in French and English, and it is the funniest thing. That's she just goes back and Frenglish. forth. Frenglish. I love it. She speaks in Frenglish. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, so, right. Yeah, so I think I think that's a love. That's a good lovely job. Little story. You did a good job. Sure. You're uh, final question here mm -hmm. from, from our We Get Questions. Oh boy, this is really okay. My husband and I are celebrating okay. our 30th wedding anniversary in early November. Okay. We are looking for a special place that comes highly recommended. Okay. We don't eat meat. But we do eat fish, and my husband eats chicken. <laughs> I will read that line. <laughs> we do, we don't eat meat. Okay, but, but we, we do, do eat fish, and my husband eats chicken. So, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. So where's where's a special place to go? Cafe for people, La Haye. People who don't eat meat but do eat meat. Cafe La Haye is a great spot. Yeah, that's a good spot. Co it's cozy. It's very cozy. It's um, very romantic. It's and, I, and I and I and I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I mm -hmm. haven't been to Caf Cafe La Haye in a while. Mm -hmm. But don't they do kind of a prefix menu sort of situation? Um, I think he does at certain times. Yeah. Yeah. So I th I think mm -hmm. with a place that small, it's mm -hmm. tiny. It's tiny. I, I'm wondering if for this 30th wedding anniversary, mm. if they could call ahead. Oh yeah. And make some special requests. I and I also know. I mean, th I I can't imagine that there's any restaurant in Sonoma that won't honor a special request. Oh, right. No, they will. You know, Eldorado Kitchen you've got. Like, if you want to order vegetarian chicken, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. I, I'm really, <laughs> really looking forward to seeing where this Vegetarian <laughs> fried chicken. She says she's vegetarian, <laughs> but, vegetarian, but, but they eat chicken and fish. And chicken. No, but you're right. I think any restaurant yeah, I think will, take of your course, they'll, they'll take your special request and make a big deal. 30 30th wedding anniversary, so congratulations to these people. All right, congratulations. I, and I think Cafe La Haye is great. You know what? Right next to Cafe La Haye, Reader's, Reader's Books. Reader's Books. <laughs> I wonder why it was on my mind. Uh, why was I there? <laughs> um, I'll give you one up uh, further afield. Uh, Glen Ellen Star up in 
Glen Ellen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Salt and Stone in Kenwood. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the Springs area, the Fairmont has Sante, which is a restaurant, mm -hmm. which is quite good. Not terrible. And not, not too not shabby. Not terrible. <laughs> um, and then, of course, yeah, around the plaza and in Sonoma, there are a lot of, a lot of good options. I, think it's just so. I mean, the thing, if you come, I mean, eat when you're here. Right. And there's Sunflower Cafe, too. Which Sunflower Cafe is great. Not for dinner, not usually, for dinner, but, but breakfast okay. and lunch and a good backyard patio. Yeah. Also, a historic building that was uh, where Salvador uh, Vallejo, the brother of, mm. uh, that was his house. So have oh. you ever worked that into, I mean, I don't know. Well, what we've got in, in Dead be. Spread. Right. Oh, is that a new book? It, this is a new book by an author called Bethany Browning. <laughs> there's a restaurant in there that they like to frequent. It's called oh. High on the Hoggerty. All right. So. We didn't mention Hoggerty, by the way. The founder, <laughs> the founder of the town, the European founder of the town. Yeah. Augustine. Uh, Augustine Augustus, Augustus Hoggerty. <laughs> and uh, there's, a, yeah, and, and there's a, a, a distant relative still yeah. in town. Of, yes. Of the Hoggerty's. Yes. And high on Hoggerty. High on the Hoggerty is the barbecue place where <laughs> oh they all God. eat. Yeah. <laughs> what? I love it. I just love it. I, 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 what I think is like when I'm reading this, because... Because when we were talking to George about uh, the Count uh -huh, yeah. and Herastasy, mm -hmm. or however I pronounce his name, and how he met his demise mm -hmm. by a crocodile, yeah, um, and you think that can't be true. So if, if you would put that into a book, mm -hmm. you would think it wasn't. Like, true. That's crazy. That's mm -hmm. I mean, it's great for a cozy. But, yeah, it's but, perfect. But for sometimes a cozy. it's like like truth is stranger than fiction, or the, it writes itself kind mm -hmm, of thing, mm -hmm. which I love. Sonoma is full of stories. I mean, I think that's that's another thing that we can talk about with people who want to come visit here. Right. There's a story here. Right. What's your Sonoma story? Oh, I like that. Mm. You should do copywriting. I should do copywriting. <laughs> <laughs> I should write catchy slogans for write, people. Hey, I, the owner of the tourism <laughs> office is looking for writers. Um, Bethany, if, if going back to this, if people want more information about your book, where do they find it? How do they do that? I'm on bethanybrowning.com. Okay. I have a website. You can sign up um, for a newsletter, which, you know, basically if I, if I get your email address, I'm just going to let you know when I have new things coming out. I've got a new short story published, whatever. I'm not going to okay. spam you. Okay. I'm also on Threads. What is that? Uh, that is um, the new social media app. That is the oh, Twitter. Oh, right. Thank you. That's so funny. I'm like, is this a writing thing? No, yeah. you're right. Threads. We do have an account on Threads. Yeah, I'm I, on Threads. Immediately, I, I texted our social media person, like, get on Threads. Get on Threads. So right. I'm at uh, Bethany Browning Books. Oh, good. On Threads. Okay, cool. And I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really active yeah, on I Twitter. Think, yeah, now it's called X, which is dumb. I just don't get any... Um, no. I, I don't get any, I'm not a blue check. So you don't I want some outrage? No, I don't want outrage. Uh, yeah. I don't want... You I want to engage want... in meaningful conversation? I do. Then you should go to your local bookstore. Yes. You like that? Yes. <laughs> Always go to your local um, bookstore. Bethany, I, I just want to caution people, not caution people. <laughs> you, your other stories are dark. They're fun. I like them. They are not cozies. No. Like they're, they're Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, yeah, they're love horror it. stories, right. you and, know, and they're going to be scary, and right. they're going to be sometimes like I mean, Sasquatch Baby in particular, it kind of it kind of leans uh, more toward it gets humorous, right? But it's funny. But there's have. what we call body horror. Body horror. Yeah. So if you're into body horror, um, then that's a book for you. If you're really squeamish, right? Um, just skip over those parts and okay. read funny parts. <laughs> where, do you, where do you learn all these terms? Cozy body horror. Is there like a? Yeah, you go to the author school. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you, you start school. once you start trying to get published. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, people will write a book, but mm -hmm. they don't know what genre it's in. Oh, okay. You know, so when you start getting, you start querying agents. So there's a whole process that people go through to get traditionally published. Right. And it starts typically with querying an agent. Okay. And you need to know if that agent reads or pr reps. The kind Your of stuff kind that of you book. write, so I that can gotcha. be. So you need to know if they're into sci-fi, if they're into sci-fi fantasy, sci-fi fantasy romance, mystery, procedural mystery, cozy mystery, women's fiction, whatever that is, right? Literary fiction, okay. Uh, you know, sports fiction, sports drama, sports comedy. Are there so sports mysteries? Um, yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know what they are, but yeah, they're out there. Okay. Yeah, so there's um there's a genre for everybody basically. Okay. And so before you start that process, you need to understand where you fall on that spectrum. Got it. So you make sure you're not wasting your time and everybody else's. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, psh. so author school. <laughs> <laughs> the old author school. All right. Well, so for everyone listening, go to bethanybrowning.com for Brown. information. Mm -hmm. But before you do that, or after you do that, make sure you do pick up a copy of Dead Spread yes. by Bethany Browning, so spelled much. exactly the way it sounds. It's a House of Cards mystery. So. 
And for everybody else that's listening, if you like this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, rate it, tell your friends. For more information about Sonoma Valley, go to SonomaValley.com. Mom and Dad, thanks for listening. Seth, good luck in college. Yeah, Chef. Yay! Seth! <laughs> Seth. He did it. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye-bye. you, Tim.